Moshi Moshi my Gamers and welcome back to Genshi Impact. Today we're gonna do a hangout event with Lynette. The best way to understand someone is by spending time with them, whether they are an old friend or a new acquaintance. Checks and cats. Huh, what does that mean? Wait, are they supposed to be here? It's a dream come true again. That apparently, I said something about Lynette having a hangout event off camera, but look at this. This is awesome. Is that Nanette with a little pussy? Yeah. <gasps> Approach steadily. Oh, sorry! I just gave her a jump scale. Oh, it's you. One second. Now activating chat mode. You made me jump there. I thought they'd finally caught me. Hmm, made you jump? Barely. I didn't notice. Well, my heart rate did. Jumped up a little, I mean. So, uh, what kind of trouble are you in, exactly? Objectively speaking, the trouble was entirely of my own making. Half an hour ago, I was at Hotel de Boer for a drinks reception. It was to celebrate the successful opening of a show. But it was draining my energy. So, I waited for the right moment, then snuck away so I could switch to standby mode. I see, so that sent someone to find you and bring you back, but why? Um, probably because I'm playing the lead role in the show. The lead role? Is that so surprising? I'm always getting invitations to do solo performances. I just usually get Linny to write back and turn them down. But then came the Fontanalia Film Festival. We took all the kids from the House of the Hearth out to see a film, and after it finished, they all started the ear are so to cute, try huh? acting for some reason. Even Linny was chanting along with them. Anyway, it just so happened that a director called Mary who had sent me an invitation right around then. I'll spare you the details, but basically, I ended up accepting it. So that is the dramatic debut of the magician's puppet, huh? Yep, you nailed it. I'm playing the role of a puppet. In fact, the show's called The Lost Puppet, and it's a masked mime show. So, I don't have to do any facial expressions or say any lines. Literally just a series of physical movements. The director says it's a very avant-garde art form. That does sound pretty anti-garde, but can people understand the plot? Art is not comprehended by the mind, but felt in the heart. At least, that's what the director says. Anyway, if nothing else, the opening performance seemed to go down well. At the drinks reception, everyone was crowding around me, saying, Triumphant character portrayal, faithful adaptation of the original work, unequivocally, quintessentially avant-garde, and stuff like that. But being the center of attention is draining. So the moment they left me to go harass the director instead, I was out of there. For once, you weren't able to use Lenny as a human shield. The other thing is, some weird things happened while I was on the stage. Oh, <laughs> sorry Bonnie. I didn't mean to leave you out of the conversation. My bad. I take it Bonnie's your pet cat? No, we just met. That's what I thought. We bumped into each other right after I slipped away. And you already named her? Well, it'd be kind of difficult for us to communicate otherwise. Besides, I think she's taken a liking to the name, haven't you, Bonnie? Meow. Yeah, that's right. Good kitty. We'll go find your owner soon, I promise. Owner? Not a stray cat then? Nope. She's wearing a collar, and for the most part, she's pretty well groomed. If she is a stray, she hasn't been for long. Her stomach's been growling a lot. I guess she must have been missing for a few days now. As much as I'd love to hang out with her for a while longer, her owner's probably worried sick about her. Assuming she has an owner, that is. <sighs> but the reception... I should probably show my face there again at some point, even if it's just to make excuses and leave again. Mm, decision time. Is this a tough decision for you? Well... I just find it exhausting, thinking through all the different ramifications of different choices and so on. That's more Lenny's area than mine. So, unless it's something really important, I usually just leave the decision making to him. But for once, he's not here when you need him. But that doesn't happen often. It's fine. 
You got Fermanade to make me a little something for just this situation. Poof! A photometer. What the hell is this? It looks pretty over the top, I know. But it's essentially just a box of cards. He kept the design simple, so it'd be harder to break. The way it works is, I pick a card at random, then look at the number on the card. And how does it help you make a decision? Well, for example, if the number on the card is five or higher, I help Bonnie find her owner. If it's less than five, I go back to the reception. Simple and straightforward. I just have to believe in the bond between me and my cards, and my fate will reveal itself to me in numerical form. At least, that's what Lenny said. Anyway, I guess I'll give you a demonstration. Go on. You said demonstration. A Lenny before the drug card. This is a little huh, part of the I didn't like that. Was I using it wrong? Hmm. Maybe if I just... I barely went what I was saying. Lenny smacked the card box and the card falls into the ground. Really? Clearly, that the whole thing? Some design flaws to iron out. I'll have to let Fremenay know. I feel like maybe this wasn't a design issue. Let's see. Which card did I get? Four. Less than five. So that means no helping Bonnie. Well, the cards fell on the ground though, so I don't think it counts as fate. If you want to get the right answer, you have to let fate decide. Also something Linny said. So, to put it another way, if picking a card up off the ground is how to not leave it to fate, then that means it must be the wrong answer. I think, I think what Lenny really meant is sometimes you had to accept the answer you didn't want. Um, or why don't you pick a card? Since I ran into you here, that means uh, our fates are, like, interfering with each other. Alright, I'll pick another card for you. Thank you. This one is final, I promise. Here, take the fatometer. If it's five or above, that means fate successfully changed. Anything lower than five is a fail. Also, if you have your own thoughts about what I should do, feel free to share it. Now that I've got a good problem solver here to help, I don't need to run every little thing by fate. I mean, that's true. Oh, okay, we got different choices here. I'm being the top right first. Fate or Mate is a... I'm not sure. Let's leave this one to Fate. Alright. Then let's see where Fate will lead me. Alright. The one check triggers, but the Fathomers often serve as it is for destiny cause or the success or failure of an action. Press the draw a card and get a random number between 1 to 20. If the number display is greater than or equal to the check display, you will press the check. Otherwise, you will fail it. Okay, it's showing the same things. Okay, acquire your public and friendly aids can sometimes affect the results of these checks. You could check both, but add to your random drawing number, making it easier to press checks. Oh, okay, look at these blue cards. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. What cat should I pick? It was lesson four. Oh man, I didn't. Oh, that sucks. <sighs> Back to the drinks reception. I have to ask about the decks of cards. There's 20 cards in total, numbered 1 to 20. So there's only a 1 in 5 chance of drawing less than a 5. I should also mention, this time the cutoff was 5, but I just said that to wherever I feel like. I mean, clearly you don't want to go. You could just... Nope, I said it was your decision. I'm not gonna waste any more energy dragging my feet. Besides, the drinks reception is technically part of the job as an official publicity event. So, if I bail on it... You feel guilty inside? I might get sued for breach of contract, and that would be a huge pain in the butt. Oh, one other thing. Do you want to come with me? If you're free, I mean. Um, surely. Then you'll have to at least one friend there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Ooh, we're gonna drink a I mean, surely. Seems like we're gonna have some sweets and drinks in here. I mean, she's a fatty. There you are, Lynette. Where did you disappear to? Leone and I have been looking everywhere for you. Wait, where did you get the cat? I found her outside. Do either of you happen to recognize her? Um, I don't think so. Could belong to one of the guests, I suppose. <sighs> Fair enough. 
That was a long shot. So sorry we couldn't help you, Lynette. Uh, don't worry. We'll ask around for you. Leone's probably just being forgetful. Maybe you could leave her with us. We'll take her to the reception desk and see if they know anything. And if not, we'll just keep looking. Sure. I would help, but I'm a little preoccupied. Sorry to dump this on you. It's no trouble at all. We're happy to help however we can. Also, uh, if it's no trouble, I mean, could we maybe get an autograph? And maybe a photo, too? Uh, uh Leone, you can't spring that on her now. Not while she's working. At least wait until the event's finished. One last thing, Lynette. Director Mary is looking for you. We'll take the cat to the front desk now. See you later. <sighs> You're so popular. Mm, I'm not usually required at these kinds of events, so I don't even have an event mode. All right, guess I'd better go see the director. Oh man, I feel her. She Spectacular feels. Spectacular choreography, a masterpiece of mise en scène, and the performance. Oh my, groundbreaking, dripping with the uh, je ne sais quoi. My congratulations on another magnificent show, sir. Yes, yes, I for one was particularly captivated by the clearly allegorical narrative undertones. The Lost Puppet shines a spotlight on the impact of technological advances in our modern society, particularly as they relate to changing modes of emotional expression and the challenge of mutual intelligibility. Such a pioneering work, so far ahead of its time, a tour de force of avant-garde theater. <laughs> I can already see the oh, my, of tomorrow's newspapers. They will certainly be singing your praise, Director Mary you. <laughs> but it was a group effort, of course. To convey emotions in a silent show with no facial expressions, the entire cast had to go above and beyond. Everyone truly outdid themselves. Uh, speaking of the cast, Jillian, another strong performance from you in Director Mary Yu's latest show. As, of course, we've all come to expect from your numerous successful collaborations to date. That's quite an overstatement. I've only ever played supporting roles. On that point, you stated a few months ago in an interview that you were looking to secure a leading role in your next show. What led you to the decision to stay in a supporting role this time around? Um... <clears throat> we had a discussion about this, and while Lynette hadn't previously performed in an acting role, we were blown away by her talent, and she was a perfect fit for this character. Quite simply, this was the role she was born to play. Exactly. I was honored to share the stage with her. Lynette worked extremely hard in all of the rehearsals, and she's an incredibly talented actress. Oh, Lynette's back! Hey, Lynette, where have you been? Are you in standby mode? Some reports say you switched that state to recharge after a show. Ah, oh, method acting, of course. Such a compelling portrayal of a mechanical puppet could only be achieved by an actor who lives and breathes their role even while off stage. Those seemingly stilted movements were in fact an inspired portrayal of the character. The ostensibly bad acting, in reality, was the product of supreme acting skill. Oh, uh, I went outside and there was this cat there, so I played with the cat for a bit. A cat? <laughs> We've long heard that you are a kind soul, as well as an incredible actress. No wonder your debut performance has garnered such popularity. This show looks on track to break box office records for avant-garde theater. Lynette, any words for the fans? Um, not really, no. Uh, I believe Lynette is trying to say that the act of performance itself is the actor's true means of connecting with their fans. Oh, I see. Lynette, any comments? <sighs> mm-hmm. Right, exactly. But don't you want the fans to know how you're feeling right now? After the hugely successful opening of your first ever show? That's true. I'm sure the fans would love to learn a bit more about you, too. How interesting. Insane. I'm so glad to see how she's doing. <gasps> oh, fuck! Oh! <laughs> this is ten. One, two... Uh, you know what? Let's, let's go to five. Please... Eleven. 
Oh, I got 11. That's bad. I mean, good. Then this was just stupid doing this view. She sounds like an auto reply bot. Hold on. Hold on. Has only just finished performing. She needs to recharge. Oh, really? I'm so sorry. How rude of me. Huh? Wait. You're... You're the traveler who's been in the news! Did you come to see the show? Wow! Are you a fan of Lynette too? Do you have any comments on her first performance? I haven't seen any. You and Lynette struggled to keep with your both intro with questions. At long last, the clouds have been disappeared. <laughs> Aww, this needs a hug after that. Are you alright? Yeah, it's just... Turns out, even with you here to share the load, I can't cope with this stuff, even in tea party mode. Tea party mode? Hmm. The dance of the dance looks goofy. Mode for participating in conversation at tea parties. Normally, I can get through an entire conversation just with. Mm hmm. Oh, that's true. And how interesting. But at a tea party, I'm not normally subjected to a constant stream of questions. <sighs> the energy consumption of that interview just now was three times as much as the average tea party. Mm. It's a big adjustment. Give it some time. Mm. I think I'd rather pray that I never have to do it again. Lynette? I mean, blatable. Director Maryu would like you to join the group photo to commemorate the successful opening of the show. Mm. A group photo? It's just the members of the troupe, along with Maloney and Corentin. Everyone's waiting for you. <sighs> Alright then. See you in a minute. Alright, Lynette and Sally go to do the Pogu photo. Two, one, smile. How's it look like? Wait, do I get to see <sighs> My it? My thanks to each and every one of you here for your help in making the lost puppet a success. The group photo is already being printed as I speak. You can collect your copy from the first floor after the drinks reception concludes. May it serve as a reminder of this fabulous performance every time you see it. Marry you! <laughs> Get over here. Let's have another drink. There's a few things I need you to glance over for me. Wait, uh, wait, that means the obsession still isn't over? I thought the group photo was the final hurdle. Well, at least there's no more people hounding me with questions. I just need to find somewhere to switch to standby mode, and the time will fly by. I hope. Damn. She, I mean, she seems like you're very relatable if you ask me. <laughs> I'm so tired of doing this, I wanna leave. Just get out, Oni Chan. Ah, how did you get here? Daddy, <laughs> I mean, father said, just, just get out of here, because you can. You're right, I should leave. Okay, second floor of more disasters. Oh, wait, oh, damn it! Felina, what is she doing here? Uh, Hotel de Boer's Il Flutante is as wonderfully sweet as ever. Felina, you must to get invited to the drink competition too? Traveler? Lynette? Oh, wait, hold on. What do you mean, manage to get an invite? <laughs> I'm an expert in the dramatic arts. Of course I was invited. Naturally, people wanted to hear my comments on the emerging art form that is the masked mime show. So then, what did you think? Remarkable. And a very worthwhile artistic endeavor. Exploring a character with no lines or facial expressions who can only communicate how they feel through their movement. Your performance was beyond anything I could have imagined, Lynette. Clearly, this was a very suitable role for you indeed. Alright, private checks are the special types of checks that need to be actively triggered. But instead, let's will augment a trigger in specific timers. If you pass, you'll find some hidden information such as including in the person's attitude or certain encoded details. Oh, heal sounds? If you listen closely, you can hear some small noise coming from the back corner. Huh? Hmm? Is, is something wrong? No. It's nothing. Please go on. Oh, basically, I think I'd give it a positive review overall. Just not as gushing as the crowd downstairs. So, you thought they were pretty over the top too? Mm, in fairness, it's normal to bring along some vocal supporters for publicity when a new show opens. But still, this was something else. 
Then again, I'm no specialist in avant-garde theater. Uh, maybe I'm just not well acquainted with their review criteria. Or maybe it's because I came to the show with some preconceived expectations. I did happen to see the original draft of Mary Yu's script a while back. What original draft? Oh? He didn't show it to you? It must have been a few months ago. He came to me to get some advice from an experienced performer's perspective, and then asked if I could write a few reviews of his new play. I had a lot on my plate at the time, so I had to turn him down. I only skimmed a few sections, but they seemed quite different from the final version. I can't say I remember the plot, but I don't know. The protagonist just seemed more complex, I guess, especially in the last two scenes. Still a mechanical puppet on the outside, of course, but she seemed to have more emotional depth on the inside. Emotional depth? Oh, <laughs> I'm just thinking aloud here. Don't take it to heart. Besides, a script and a play are two very different beasts. There are so many fine details to consider when turning a story into a stage production. More than most people could imagine. Especially with a novel art form like a masked mime show. I'm sure Mary Yu had his reasons for the changes he made. Hmm. <clears throat> Change of topic. I see you've escaped the crowds to seek refuge on the second floor. Fame can be overwhelming at first, can't it? Uh, perhaps you'd benefit from hearing about the experiences of a veteran celebrity such as myself? No thanks, I'm good. Pretty sure this will be my first and last time in this situation. Uh, hey! At least let me finish. I have top tips on dealing with belligerent reporters. Slipping away to hunt down snacks during the intermission. Mm. Tell me everything. <laughs> First, take a seat, mon ami. We must partake of Hotel de Boer's fine desserts as we talk, lest they go to waste. Okay, the TV enjoys some debatable treats. Hmm. That was very educational. As occasional isn't a word to uh, use, they didn't mention acting once in the whole conversation. I expect most of the people downstairs have left by now. Time to grab my copy of the group photo and get home. Yay! I mean, hopefully no one's there. They're actually up there actually, so let's actually just jump down here like nothing happened. Like, wee! Time to go over here. The photo must be in this envelope right here. Ah. <sighs> It's finally over. Thank you for sticking around for so long. If it wasn't for you, I don't know how I would have standby moded my way through the last few hours. Hmm, ain't no puzzle would find even like this stressful, but enough to ward Lenet leaving halfway through when you left the event midway. What was the real reason? <clears throat> I mean, if you really don't want to talk about it. It's fine. It's just... It was such a minor thing. While I was on stage, there was a moment when I felt like someone was looking at me. It was only for an instant, and I didn't even see who it was. But somehow, I knew it was a look of contempt. I got a vague sense of it again during the reception. Like someone was giving me an evil stare. But I couldn't figure out who it was. Hmm, okay, you constantly regard this Lynette. A few people would manage to hide their feelings from Lynette at close range. Whoever it was, there must be a good actor. Normally, I'm used to lurking in the shadows on the stage and spying on other people. So, it was strange. Feeling like I was the one being spied on this time. Hmm. Could it have something to do with the original script Fuina mentioned? Or someone just took a disliking to me for no real reason. Sometimes you can like one person and dislike another for equally pointless reasons. Anyway, it was just a momentary stink eye. That's all. Nothing for you to worry about. Okay, well, if you're not worried, I'm not worried. Okay, problem solved. I'm gonna take this envelope and go home now. Yep, you oh, what does this? You heartless, heartless puppet! You ruined this work! Head over the world lit actors immediately. Wait, hold up. <laughs> Nani! It's a death letter! You have destroyed this work of art. Step down from the leading role at once. 
Based on the tone, I'd say threat letter is right. This is far more serious than the mom with strength. Ah, right, we need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, okay, examine the letter to see if there's anything amiss. The answer on below contains the good photo, the threat letter, and some photos of Lynette from doing the show. It was definitely meant for her. The letter demands that Lynette steps down for the leading role, but stops short of saying what will happen if she doesn't. Neither of us recognize the handwriting. It's messy. Perhaps it covers the tracks, or maybe the person is just a messy handwriter. Think back to what was happening on the first floor while we were taking some time out. There were a lot of people downstairs at the time. Any of them could have slipped the letter into the envelope. All the envelopes were left on the table of the first floor, but nobody was tasked with washing them. I could ask for protection, but it's unlikely they saw anything. I don't think we're gonna find any more clues here. Shall we ask Mitchell's what will mix of you have destroyed this work of art? Yes, let's. Whatever destroyed means, it could have something to do with the original script that Farina mentioned. Also, I'm gonna have to ask you to stick around a while longer. That's fine. Ah, I can't believe how well the whole Lynette's debut acting role thing worked out. Even the avant-garde box office is lapping it up. <laughs> how could I ever have doubted you? If you hadn't stuck to your guns and kept sending those invitations, this opportunity would have passed us by. See? I told you. All the times she'd refused in the past were all the more reason to keep inviting her, because it turns into a big talking point. Can you imagine if you'd gone with Jillian? You'd have been lucky to get half the ticket sales you've ended up with. True. Well, Jillian still needs to get a few more productions under her belt. Do you have a moment, Director Mario? Uh, oh! Ah, if it isn't the star of the show! Uh, we were just talking about you! Hmm? Oh, and is that the legendary traveler with you? I'm guessing you're here to discuss the show with the director? <laughs> oh, you're a talented and hardworking actress, Lynette. It's no wonder you're getting such rave reviews. I'll leave you artists to discuss your work in peace. Uh, Mary, you make sure you give your star performer and her friend your full attention. I certainly will. Lynette carries the fortunes of our entire troupe on her shoulders. <laughs> Who was that? Mr. Maloney. An investor something, I think. I've never asked him. <laughs> So, uh, what can I do for the two of you? I'm afraid I'll have to dash soon as I'm meeting some friends from the newspaper. Otherwise, I'd love to stay longer. It won't take up too much time for you. We heard that the original script for The Lost Puppet was quite different from the final show. I'm kind of curious to know what the protagonist was like in that version. Oh! Well, this is a surprise. I didn't think you'd be interested in that sort of thing. It's not uncommon for scripts to undergo major changes as they're being brought to the stage. But I'm afraid there's not much to tell you in this case. The protagonist has stayed the same from the beginning to end. A mechanical puppet with a bumbling body but a sensitive soul. A stranger in time who doesn't belong. There's no doubt about it. You are the protagonist and the protagonist is you. The success of one is the success of the other, and that's what made this show an artistic triumph. Mm. Sorry, you've lost me. Can you put it in plain words? <laughs> All right, then. Delving deep in the search of core truths is the job of an artist, after all. You shouldn't give your attention to early drafts of the script, Lynette. All it would do is sow confusion where you already have clarity. The current script is the final version because it is the best version. And your performance best brings that script to life. Why, if it weren't for you, I doubt any audience would give our show the time of day. Then how do you explain this fucking letter? What letter? Oh my goodness! Yeah, look at that! Destroyed this work of art? Really? Well, Director Mario, any idea who might have written it? No. Who on earth would write such nonsense? Hmm. 
We found the envelope contains the good photo. Absolutely not. Without Lynette, this show would be over. Everyone's hard work would go to waste. No, there's no way that this is someone from the troop. Well, is there any way Lynette could lie low until the blows over? Yeah, maybe Jillian could fill in for me for a while. What? No way, out of the question. The protagonist has to be played by Lynette. Jillian can't... She's just not what the audience is looking for. Okay, Major Edgar's just a change and became a bit sus. Major's eyes are dang down and he's lowering his voice. Ah, I've got it. It's a competitor. Yes, this letter must be from a competitor of ours who's trying to get under Lynette's skin. You can't lie low. That's just what they want you to do. The moment you step back from performing, they'll put their rumor mill into overdrive and drag us through the mud. They're just waiting for their chance to kick us while we're down. A competitor? Really? Definitely. Those lowlifes. Slander and libel are all their specialties. They drown out the truth with a flood of misinformation. And they stop at nothing once they get riled up. Hmm. You sound very familiar with their methods. Oh, there's so many of them out there. Fame always seems to attract haters. No matter what That's you do, true, actually. try and keep everyone happy. But don't worry. I will get to the bottom of this. Stay strong, Lynette, and keep up the good work on stage. I have to go and meet my friends from the newspapers now, but rest assured, I'll be discussing countermeasures with them. Okay. Don't so, ever trust you. A competitor, huh? Do you think that's it? Mm, I kind of doubt it. We've dealt with those types before. Usually their goal is to steal our venue for their own show or to cover up a scandal by planting a story to divert public attention. But at the moment, I don't think anyone's got a reason to do any of that stuff. Let alone pull a stunt like this. A threat letter is quite extreme. Besides, when I felt that evil stare, I'm pretty sure it was coming from somewhere backstage. So that rules out a lot of people. I'm actually more concerned about Mary you. When I mentioned Jillian, his reaction was pretty unusual. So you noticed that too? Especially since Maloney mentioned that the initial plan was to cast Jillian as the lead. Sounds like there was an original protagonist as well as an original script. Hmm. I should probably go talk to her. Do you know where she lives? Yep. She told me she lives in the flow of Sandra. Oh, interesting. You know, this feels like more like an investigation than a hand of it now all of a sudden. <laughs> like, what is going on with this acting thing that Lynette is doing? So I'm jealous. Like, what's going on? L Lynette? What are you doing? You're not welcome here. I've been to the Flow of Sandra plenty of times before. And this is the first I'm hearing about me not being welcome. Things are different around here. You might be used to a crowd of bootlicking morons fawning over you wherever you go. But not down here. We... We know what you are. Bootlicking morons? She got a bone to pick with you, I guess? I don't know. I've never met this kid before. Gina, stop that! Go home now! <laughs> Jillian! No buts. How many times do I have to tell you? That had nothing to do with Lynette. If you don't leave right now, I swear I'll... I'll, I'll never invite you to one of my shows ever again! Jillian! I... I... <laughs> Just because Lady Farina speaks highly of you, it doesn't mean you're all that. But a few more choice words from Gina, she storms off. I'm so sorry. Gina's always been a strong willed child. That's why I never let her visit me at work. It's okay. I have younger siblings too, so I get it. She's in her rebellious phase, huh? If you let angsty kids get you riled up, they'll drain all your energy. So don't worry, I won't let it get to me. <sighs> well, the situation's a little different in this case, but still, thank you. So, what brings you to the flu of Sandra? We came to see you. We heard about it from Maloney. He said you were originally supposed to play the lead. Maloney, huh? Of course he couldn't keep his mouth shut. I'm sorry, I never mentioned it because Director Mary, you was very clear that I mustn't let any of it affect you. Hmm, let me see this letter. What's this? It's like, holy shit, the fuck is that? I... 
I don't know, uh... Who would do something like this? Don't be scared, Jillian. Just tell us what you know. Okay. I'll try. It's true. I was originally cast as the lead in The Lost Puppet. I've worked with director Mary Yu many times before. But only in minor roles. The audiences and critics never had much to say about me. Nothing terrible, but nothing amazing either. A few months ago, Mary Yu started working on a new show, so I plucked up the courage to ask him if I could take the leading role. He was hesitant, but he agreed to let me try for the part. We did a few rehearsals, everything seemed to be going okay, but then... What's up? There's... been a change of plan, Jillian. The leading role will now be played by Lynette. Lynette? But she always turns these things down, doesn't she? And that's why we cannot afford to waste this opportunity. Chilean. I understand how you must be feeling. But Maloney and myself have to do what's best for the production as a whole. Next time, the lead will be yours. I promise. I was incredibly disappointed at first. But I also know full well that I don't have Lynette's star power. Without Lynette, how could we ever convince people to pay money to go and see a masked mime show? And if the show was a flop with me in the leading role, how would I answer to the director and the rest of the cast? Then, I got to meet you on stage and found that you're really down to earth, in a way that not many celebrities are. You were kind to everyone, and your performance wasn't bad. Whatever disappointment I had left at that point, I certainly wasn't about to take it out on you. By wasn't bad, you mean it wasn't great either. So, I'm guessing Mariu changed the script to simplify the protagonist, make her a dumbed-down version of the mechanical puppet that I could actually play. He did make some changes to the script, yes. How do we get our hands on the little job? We who currently has it? Jaik, one of the other actors. He likes to collect Dr. Mariu's old drafts because he hopes to be a director himself one day. He also lives nearby. I can arrange for you to meet him at the tavern. Makes sense. I always see him talking to Mariu. Alright, see you at the tavern then. Damn, what is going on with these people? That was just on Dale. Whee! Alright. Hey, hey, dude, I'm gonna sit down with. It. After waiting for the time for a while. Sorry to keep you waiting. Jillian brought me up to speed on the situation. I'm here to help however I can. Here, this is the script you're after. Mm, it's very well. Looks like he was constantly editing it. That's always the way with pen and paper drafts. Even the final script is full of last minute changes by the director. There should be a cleaner copy of the original script in here somewhere. Ugh, sorry, it's all a bit mixed up. I just grabbed the whole stack of paper since I was in a rush. No problem. Now activating search mode. I'll go through one page at a time. Okay. I mean, with me, right? Yep, I'm being like, that's kind of funny. I'm gonna start from left to right. Let's start with top one. The official scope of the lost puppet teaches how the, the dancing puppet person is objected by humanity and then begins searching for the meaning of life. Gotta be carefully. A crane's position in front of the aid can sometimes affect the result of these checks. Your current check bars will add to you when you draw numbers, making it easy to pass checks. Oh, okay. I'm gonna start from the right side, the last card. A three. That's an eight! Fuck! We got nothing. After a quick read through this group, I understand the gist of the story. Okay. So, I guess the next one is the top one too? Hmm, let's see if it's a current version of the last part in the original scripts. Uh, is this the same thing or a different one? I don't even know. So, that's 10. And that still failed, but that's okay. That's completely fine. Okay. That's probably. Oh, yeah, that's 2. Alright, if it's gonna note the middle. Okay, the news will clipping the monster notes. They're about to show the different style. Those are for the first few pages are turned yellow, which means it must have been quite old. Look for the mention of Mimitrix. Fifteen? Okay. Uh two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's pick this one. Make it something higher. Okay, that's eleven. Okay, yeah, we got nothing so far. 
Skimming through the early newspaper clipping now, the headline was injected in Mixlix. In more recent years, there are many reports pressing Mixlix as forward thinking director, one of the greatest of his era. Okay, I'm gonna just sit on be like, I'm gonna sit right here just to read this one next. Mary's original script is literally with the images, it is very legible. Read carefully. Alright, so I need to get 12. Uh, if it's 12, I'll pick the second one. Come on, that's only 10. Damn, is this very random or is this, or is this f part of the story? Nope, I can't read this at all. Oh wow, we really learned it! Last one! These girls seem to be missing all the work. Someone focus on the list of our chats. Scheme the world. This is 15. I'm picking this again. That's a foy. Fuck, we got nothing. But I'm sure it's fine though, nothing wrong with that. The photo from recent years shows fancy venues and parlor set, but the earlier photos show much humbler venues. I don't see any else in the worthy. Like, damn, we got nothing so far. The protagonist returns to the ruins where she began and performs a dance in honor of her deceased companions. She dances until her joints have rusted stiff and mechanical parts are falling from her body. Hmm. Yep, that's not something a novice could hope to pull off after just a few months of rehearsals. The basic plot is the same. She lost the ability to dance to the wear and tear in her secretary, but there's much more emotion behind the scene. The memory of her former companion coming to peace with her life. The simple set and solo performance mean the lead actress has to carry the whole scene herself. It's a much more determined role than the final script. <sighs> Frankly. I think that the original script is much better, and the original lead is the best fit. Jillian, shall I go tell Mario to put you back in the leading role? <laughs> what? Are you serious? But the next show is at the Opera Epicles. It's such a huge opportunity. But not such a rare one for me though, right? That's different. This isn't you as part of a magic duo. It's a chance to star as the main character in a show. You'll reach whole new heights of fame. Um, fame in small doses has its perks, but too much and I'll get overloaded. But if you play the lead, the fame will be yours, and I get to be free. Sounds like a win-win, don't you think? It'll never work. There's no way director Mary Yu or Maloney would ever agree to it. The set for act four would need to change, as would all the marketing materials. And that would mean asking Maloney for a lot more Mora. Changing actors at the last minute is just too risky. If anything went wrong, it could bankrupt the whole troupe. Plus, Maloney's friends have already published a ton of articles saying how this is the role that Lynette was born to play. No one else can play the protagonist now. If Lynette quit the show and I took her place... Hmm... Uh, none of the future Arkle would have any celebrities. If Lynette left, they'd sooner stop the whole show than let me take her place. Stop the whole show? But all the people in the troupe, months and months of everyone's hard work would all be for nothing. No wonder Matrix will say anything to try and keep the net on board. Oh wait, is there any other way? Uh, let's see. It's probably randomized. I'm gonna do this. Click. Thirteen. Well, okay, I guess not. Mrs. Wood never come back the while he got Melissa breathing down his neck. It's no good. Melissa would never consent to it. Mm, consent, huh? Then how about we don't ask him? Huh? Wait, surely you don't mean... Then explains her idea to the group. What's she thinking, Ashley? And that way, he'll be forced to make a choice. You know, it's a little crazy, but it might actually work. N no way! It's not worth taking such a huge risk just for a chance to be in the spotlight. Jillian, you said before, whatever disappointment I had left, I wasn't about to take out on you. In other words, that disappointment is still there, but you've kept it bottled up inside. Be honest. You still hope to play the leading role, don't you? I... But the thought of putting so many people out just for my sake? You think they'd be put out? Hmm. That's not how I see it. Jillian, you were more dedicated than anyone during the rehearsals for the original script. We all saw how hard you worked for this role. And I think you know that unless we decide to make a stand here, the path we're on is only going to take us further and further from our dreams, all of us. So take it from me. You would not be putting us out. Not one bit. Well, the plaster seeds. Guys, I, I, okay. Let's do it. 
I will play my part. Yes! I knew you'd come around. All right, I'll let the rest of the troop know, and we'll start preparing immediately. <sighs> Wonderful. This solves everything. Wait, but what about the threat letter? Do you have any idea who sent it? As long as we stick to the plan, I'll give up the lead role, so it won't matter anymore, right? But surely you want to know who it's from. If they're out there and no one's keeping an eye on them, what if they come looking for you? Um, I doubt they will. It's supposed to be a threat, but they didn't even say what would happen if I don't meet their demands. Plus, the handwriting is kind of childish. Doesn't look like a professional intimidator to me. Who knows? Maybe it was just a fan of yours having a moment. A fan? Of me? Maybe there's someone out there who really appreciates your talent. Even in the supporting roles. Could that be from one of the goodest fan? I mean, it could be... Number one. That's just a nine! Ah. This part's not a storyline though. I want to I need some evidence. Mm, it's getting late. We should be leaving. Huh? So suddenly? Come on. Um, okay, Lynette, you're just dragging me. Oh, she's holding my hand. You seem to hear the sound. You know it's a faint sound for some of the corner and you're leaving the tower. I... I'm such an idiot. An Sorry idiot. for manhandling you. You looked like you were seconds away from figuring out who sent the letter, so I had to act fast. Actually, I have an idea. It was Gina, Jillian's sister. Oh, you know what? I was, I was thinking Just it was probably her. Verena speaks highly of you. It doesn't mean you're all that. I'm so sorry. Gina's always been a strong-willed child. That's why I never let her visit me at work. She has at least her official view of the Lost but Weekend, which means Gina yeah, does say pay her since Sigley came to watch her at work. I guess she must have snuck into the drinks reception and overheard our conversation with Farina. She idolizes Jillian, both as an older sister and an actress. And she watched as the dream role Jillian had been waiting to play for so long got snatched away from her by some amateur who's never acted before. To make matters worse, all the critics were hailing this amateur as a perfect fit for the role. And even Fontaine's former biggest star was praising her abilities. She wrote that letter in the fate of Inga. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Aren't you gonna confront her about it? Like I said, getting angry at angsty teenagers is draining. Besides, if it was my younger brother or sister and they found out I'd been treated unfairly or had an opportunity stolen from me, they'd definitely do something far worse. I can imagine. I was in Jillian's position once. Back when Linny and I were starting out, before we got famous, we just had to take things a day at a time. Doing our shows, slowly trying to build up our reputation, so I can understand Gina's frustration. Still, she could definitely use some pro tips on how to write a threat letter. Hmm. Uh, she must have been the only, the one giving you that evil stale, right? No, the way she looks at me is indignant, frustrated, but not malicious. Plus, she didn't even try to hide how she felt. Whoever was giving me that evil stare was backstage. Blending into the crowd at a drinks reception is one thing, but trying to blend in backstage, where everyone's on high alert waiting to be called on stage, would be a lot more difficult. Hmm. We'll find out who it is before too long. In two days time, at the next show, I think it will become very clear. On that note, guess I'll see you at the Opera House. Bye for now. Um, okay, bye for now. Alright, we're here, Lynette. Well, this guy first. Oh, you're here! Lynette and Jillian are busy getting ready, so please come with me. Yeah, sure. Shortly after falling into keys into the Opera House, the current opens in the show Act 1, In the Wounds. That puppet in the middle, is that Lynette? She's so pretty. It's starting. Keep your voice down. The protagonist, a dancer, has been abandoned in some wounds. She sus it is because of the health condition while with her legs, which has affected her ability to dance. But then, she finds the other abandoned puppet who looks just like her. Or then she realizes her illness is just a mechanical breakdown and she is just a dancing puppet. Wow. I thought it would be hard to follow, but in the end, it was actually very clear. 
Even though her face was expressionless and she didn't speak the whole time, I felt like I could really understand how the protagonist was feeling. The journey. No, some of these things I can't even read. It's just like, this feels too fast for me. Some mechanical puppet believes in myth. At the end of the world, there was a god of puppets who could turn puppets into human beings. And so, the protagonist and her companion begins the quest. But the myth is a lie, spread by some with nothing but content for a puppet kind. At the end of the journey, they are kidnapped, demolished, meltdown, and abused. The protagonist helped her complete escape, but in the process, became trapped under the rubble of the Kapala building. She closed her eyes and entered into a deep sleep. Director Mary really is a master of his craft, and so is the actress in the lead role. I have a friend who saw the show on the opening day. They thought the critics overstated how good it was, but I gotta say, the protagonist is incredible. Back to close, then an applause from the crowd. I can't believe it's only been a few days since the last show. Lynette's improved so much. Just, wow, I'm speechless. Words simply cannot do justice to the sheer excellence we witnessed from Lynette on stage today. Your penchant for the hyperbolic strikes again, Almery. Clearly, you weren't at a loss for words when you were writing your article. I saw you hand it to the journalist. Trying to get your critique into the papers the moment the show is over, are you? <laughs> well, you know how it is. The early critics get all the readers. Wouldn't you agree, Mary Yu? Uh, <laughs> hmm? What's the matter? A cat got your tongue? Ah, the first half was a huge success. Even I could tell the acting was top tier. My uh, apologies, Mr. Maloney. Please excuse me for a second. I need to have a little talk with my actors. Oh, uh, very, very well. Hey, while you're at it, uh, this might be a good time to talk future collaborations with Lynette. <laughs> Hmm. Now this will be about something else was going on. Are you guys sure this is gonna work? What if Director Mary you pushes back? We're already halfway there. We can't back out now. All we need to do is stick to the plan. What is this plan that you're so intent on hiding from me? Hmm? D Director Mary you, I uh. I thought you were talking to Maloney and the critics. Korantan and Armory have both finished their articles. I went to greet them as a mere formality, but you seem to have availed yourselves of my absence during the first half to defy me. What have you done? Was that really Lynette playing the lead role? Well done, Wood Director. You saw do it. Ta-da! Monsieur Hughes and his voice behind him. Besides the pretenders, but without her costume and mask. Director marry you? I was the one playing the lead role just now. I switched costumes and masks with Jillian so that I could be the protagonist's companion and stay out of the limelight. Lynette, why on earth would you do this? You know my acting is amateur. The only reason I'm being seen as a pro, let alone a pioneer, is because you have critics supporting the show. But right now, there's a whole audience out there. If they'd seen me in the leading role during the first half, they wouldn't be expecting anything more. But what happens now that they've seen Jillian in the role? If you force me to play the lead in the second half, they'll be wondering why is the actress suddenly giving such an underwhelming performance right at the climax of the whole story? Mm, or is this director not all his cracked up to be? These are just some of the questions that will be on everyone's minds during the second half. And those questions will follow them out the doors of the theater after the show ends. Do you think the critics will still have any celebrity then? There's only one way for you to save your reputation. And that's to keep Jillian as the lead all the way to the end. Absolutely not! I'd sooner announce that we're having technical difficulties and need to stop the show! If I keep Jillian as the lead for the second half, what do you think will happen in the curtain call when she takes her mask off? Everyone will see that we've changed actors! What will your fans think? They're only here because of you, and what about all the critics who support you? If we get on the wrong side of them, it'll be the death of the whole show! There'd be tickets to refund, fines to pay for the breach of contract! The whole troupe's hard work would go down the drain! Don't you see how much this would cost us? You can't just take a job on a whim, then abandon your responsibility the moment you don't feel like doing it anymore! You're playing games with other people's hopes and dreams! Director, marry you, please! You're not being fair to Lynette! 
Actually, Jillian, he's half right. I did kind of take this on a whim, but my responsibility here is making sure you get back the role that belongs to you. <laughs> and I guess part of that responsibility lies with me, considering I badgered you into accepting the job. Fuck yeah, we got learning. This is some story quests. Look who far decided to show up. <laughs> Sorry I'm a little late to the show. Work's been keeping me pretty busy lately. Lenny? Uh, what do you want? Do you think you can snap your fingers and make all my problems magically disappear? That might be a little tricky. But instead, I could make something else magically appear. And look at that. What's this? A draft complaint letter, my contract, your legal fees, reimbursement for the ticket, and an advance on the penalty fee for breach of contract. Mr. Mario, I'm stepping down from the leading role, regardless of whether you choose to cancel the rest of today's show. If you do suffer unforeseen financial losses from this, you're free to seek damages as per the contract. And if you want to file a lawsuit, there's a draft here that you can use if you need it. What? <laughs> I can't believe this. You're literally handing me a lawsuit against you with a straight face. Of course. All this mora, it's a pittance to you, isn't it? Must be nice to have the luxury of prior success and fame. Look at us. We're huge stars. One minute we want to go on stage. The next we feel like backing out of the contract. But that's okay. We're famous. We can afford it. You have no respect for other people's work. You're treating other people's hopes and dreams like a big joke. You don't give a hoot how much this show means to other people. You don't even care that the whole production might have to shut down because of you. That's not true. I do care. And I'm under no illusion as to how much this show means to you. Oh, brilliant deduction there. Of course it means a lot to me. This is my show. That's the only reason I asked you to be in it in the first place. Really? Then why do your eyes tell a different story? The way you look at me, it's full of contempt, almost as if I've destroyed your work of art. Hmm, he's the one who was looking at Lanes with contempt. What? I, I would never think that. A couple days ago, I asked some associates to do some digging for me. I was interested to know who else you invited to play the lead apart from Lynette. Surprise, surprise. Turns out that all the other famous actresses you asked either had prior commitments or weren't a good fit for the role. They all turned you down. And I would have turned you down too, if not for an unlikely set of coincidences. You didn't send those invitations because you were looking for a better actress than Jillian, but because your investor wanted a big name in your show. Right? Director marry you. Hmm. It's the clearest day that Glenn is an outstanding actress. To get Maloney on your side, you chose to make Jillian the understudy, and then look for an opportunity for her to take the lead. But then, the net actually accept your invitation. I bet you were torn at first, weren't you? Do you stick to the tried and tested formula? Choose Lynette, use her celebrity to get the critics on your side so that you and your investors can line your pockets? Or do you choose Jillian so that you and your longtime collaborator can stage the show of your dreams? The original, unedited version of The Lost These Puppet. These both sound same. I'm gonna pick one way you did it because the pressure from your investor. Ultimately, you betray yourself by choosing Lynette. <gasps> I didn't! I didn't betray myself! You mentioned prior success and fame earlier, but you're a well-known director yourself, with countless works to your name. Wouldn't that make you successful too? Or maybe, deep down, none of your current achievements really count as success to you. <sighs> right now, you have an opportunity to send Jillian onto that stage and perform the second half as you always imagined it. Faithful to your original script, your work would be displayed for all of Fontaine to see in its true, perfect form. Did... did you say... perfect? Will you keep pursuing a kind of success that you don't even value? Or will you act now before Maloney and the critics can protest and make your dream come true on the stage? And Jillian's dream. In fact, the dreams of the whole troupe. The whole troupe? 
director marry you? Actually, most of the money Lenny brought came from us. We all chipped in. We've worked with you for many years now. Your troupe has been here for you all the way from the empty theaters where we first performed to the Opera House today. We watched as you slowly started down a path you used to despise. The path of powerful connections, drinks receptions, backdoor deals with critics, and collaborations based on fame instead of talent. But but this is just a temporary measure. I, I did it for the good of the troupe. And, and besides, this is how the whole industry works. Everyone else is doing it. Yes, we know. Back when you started, you had to bite the bullet and do these things to keep the troupe afloat. But then what happened? You began to embrace these methods more and more, becoming so reliant on them that every show you put out is overhyped by the media, and every script you write is edited to suit some celebrity's needs. Surely you must have noticed what's happening. While we've been performing at bigger and bigger theaters with each show, the applause is getting quieter and quieter each night. And the criticism from people who've seen the show is growing. Maloney's friends are sycophants. They don't care if the audience is disappointed because the show doesn't live up to their glowing reviews. They praise the things they like and skirt around the things they don't. Look, I know everyone's using the same promotional tactics, but does that really make it okay? Well, it's... It's just a stopgap solution. I... As soon as I've made enough Mora, I'll stop. Things will be different next time. I promise. Next time, huh? Yeah. Next time, you won't use your connections. Next time, you won't pay off the critics. Next time, you'll let Julian play the lead. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. If you make some money once, you'll want to do it again. Then again, slowly but surely, you turn your back on your dreams. I won't turn my back on my dreams any longer, Director Mary Yu. Never again. Me neither. Oh, wait, today's the day. It's time to live your dreams. Oh, shit, look at all of these numbers. It is 25. I'm picking this one. Okay. And that's 33. Oh, that's a lot. Not a bad number. I had dreams too. What? Do you? You tell us? Alright, oh, Act 3, I missed the wobble. An unknown pair of tiles last before the group of medical puppets finally cleared the wobble. Free to tell us, it was quite redirectively her. They told her, you have been buried here for thousands of years. The medical puppet now rules the world. It turns out that the person who has started the story is none other than the person's companion, whom she had rescued all of those years ago. The protagonist was now reserved as a hero by all the public kind. The medical puppet asked the press what she wished for, but she only wished for one thing. Huh. The plot here seems a little different from what the reviews said. The protagonist wanted to return to the stage, so the puppets replaced all her parts with the latest ones available, built her a grand opera house, and summoned a huge audience. And in the end, she forgot herself amidst the applause and cheers of her fellow puppets. Hey, no spoilers! Huh? Wait, hang on, that's not even what's happening. The set has changed back to the one from the first act. Oh, Archons, please let this work out. No need to be so nervous, Director Maryu. We only told you Lynette would be quitting the show to get you to make a decision. We wanted you to believe that this show would have to end after today, no matter what you decided. But in truth, I believe that if we choose our words carefully, there's no reason we can't get Maloney to come around and keep the show going. Lenny is putting his experience at fooling people to work. You really thought this plan through. <sighs> but I'm not upset about what you've done. What's worrying me now isn't how Maloney will react or whether the show will get cancelled. It's the audience. I've always thought the original script is better, but will it move them like I've always hoped? When Jillian does her curtain call, will they applaud her? What if people only came to see the show for Lynette? And because of the reviews, what if they don't really care about the show at all? It feels like I've been hiding inside my safe little castle for too long. 
And now I'm scared to go outside the walls and hear what people really think. We're right here with you. We'll watch it to the end. Act Foy amidst the ruins. The protagonist rejects the other puppets offers a new part of the grand strings built in her honor. He, her only wish is to see her companion again, but she is told that they gave their lives to the resolve resolution. The bodies lie buried in the ruins where they first met. The protagonist will return to the ruins alone to where her journey first began. She performs one last dance before the grave of her companion. Hers critically burns out. Her body comes loose and falls from the body, but she keeps this until her body completely shuts down. It has taken her thousands of years, but at least she has finally found a reason for dancing. Wow. Okay, this ending is much better. I love how they brought back the set from Act 1 and gave it a whole new meaning. What a fantastic twist. Time for the curtain call. It's the moment of truth. The applause continue after I take off the mask. You always leave my mask on. You never know. <gasps> the Swina. She enjoyed it, see? Truly deserved. <laughs> okay. Joey, you were amazing! Cyro was tearing up when you did your final solo dance. Ah, uh, well, so are you. Really? I was so nervous. My legs felt like they turned to jelly. What looked like an actor unsteady on her feet was in fact a poignant expression of the protagonist's frailty in her last moments. Or whatever. Oh no, I can't take any more of that. <sighs> hey, Mary! What the heck was that? Why wasn't Lynette playing the lead? Our articles are already going to press. You better have a good explanation for this. Um... It was my... Hey now, it was all of our... Hold on. The decision was mine... And mine alone. They had nothing to do with it. If you have any concerns, gentlemen, then please direct them to me. Marry you? So it was you? Well then, I trust you'll have no objection to me pulling the plug on this production. Uh, uh... <sighs> Time for Act 5. Director Marry you, Mr. Maloney, what on earth is going on? Why was Lynette not in the lead role? It took a lot of convincing from me for her to accept the role, and I had to turn down some big work opportunities to come and watch her performance today. You have some explaining to do. Lady Mad! Uh, Lenny, it was all his idea. Marry you, uh, explain yourself. Wait, Lenny, as a matter of fact, this was a piece of performance art in this play. The masks and costumes serve to obscure the differences between characters. And, by extension, the difference between human and machine. We took that idea to the next level with an actor swap, blurring the lines between one performer and the next. So, it's in service of the ambitious artistic goals of the production. Uh, what? It's similar to deceiving the audience in a magic show. We employed this technique as a means of breaking the fourth wall. It allows the audience to more intuitively understand the cognitive dissonance felt by the protagonist as a machine trying to reconcile the notion of her humanity. The audience's experience mirrors the protagonist's own confusion and becomes part of the artistic performance itself. Uh, hold up! What is this nonsense? Oh, I see. Well, bravo, Director Marry You. You even had me fooled. That's probably more because you just don't really understand avant-garde art very well, Lenny. Maybe so, maybe so. Well, perhaps it went over my head, but I'm sure our experts here saw the whole thing coming a mile away. Uh, uh, um... You must have worked it out by the end of the first half, surely. Mr. Amory, 
I just heard that you managed to write your review after just the first two acts. I'm sure that will help Director Abidus be setting future audience up for the surprise twist at the end. <clears throat> uh, yes, you're right. Director Mary, you and I are old friends. You should have said something. Then I could have played along even better. <clears throat> yes, well, to deceive the audience, you must first deceive your closest companions. <laughs> I have to give credit to Lynette and her experience in performing magic. That's what inspired me to take my art to the next level. Hmm? You mean your show was partly inspired by Lynette's background in magic? Well, in that case, I'll have to plug it to everyone I know. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think Mr. Maloney is going to cancel the show. Cancel the show? Mr. Maloney, is this true? Uh, while I accept that deceiving the audience in the manner you did uh, certainly has artistic merit, this is not a magic show, and we don't want our audience demanding their money back. A very valid criticism, and one that I humbly accept. If that happens, we're prepared to reimburse and apologize to any audience members who weren't satisfied with the experience. Mm, but based on the recent today, reaction today I mean, I think that's what most people want to see. Plus, it looks like Jillian is better than me at delivering the excellence people want to see. I'm sure audiences will be very happy with the show if she's allowed to stay in the leading role. Hmm, some of you says have said that Lynette gave, gave the performance of the eel. Maloney, uh... I believe there should still be time to tweak my article. From the look on Lynette's face, I think she's being sincere. Oh, one other thing. We managed to get a meeting with Lady Farina earlier. All thanks to the Traveler's reputation, of course. Anyway, she agreed to write a review focusing on Jillian's performance and the quality of the show as a whole. She promised to give her honest opinion. And I'm sure today's audience will be discussing her performance too. There's sure to be a variety of opinions. How would you rate the show? Oh, I mean, art at its finest, clearly. Uh, but I'll have to give it some thought before I decide exactly what to write. Oh, of course. Always good to put some thought into these things. Especially now, with a growing range of voices out there. I imagine competition for readers becomes more fierce when everyone's discussing the topic. <sighs> Quarantan. Amory, let's go. A soft face melee leads with this critical in tow. You learn it, or whatever it to say. Damn, that's over. You know, this is this, this, this is gonna take a long payoff, man. Like, damn. <sighs> Thank you both so much. Without the two of you, who knows how much further down that cynical path I would have gone. I always told myself that. Once I'd made enough Mora, I'd get back to doing what I loved. But somewhere along the way, I started to lose sight of what that was. <laughs> Just like those critics with their dishonest reviews, I became all about the trappings of success. At the expense of the art itself. At least you came to your senses just in time. You're right. Yes. I'm a very lucky man. Anyway... Enough about my problems. What are we going to do about the threat letter that Lynette received? I've been looking into it a lot over the past couple of days, but it doesn't seem like it was one of our competitors after all. Ah, yes, about that. Um, Lynette, do you have a moment? Mm -hmm. Wait, you're Jillian's sister, right? I'm sorry. Gina insisted on coming to see Lynette. I couldn't stop her. Lynette! Uh... Hmm, let just shot my glass. I think she unsure which mode to use in this situation. Uh what she thinks about? Never heard of it. Uh a six I mean if it's low Um uh, uh, she she should be fine, I guess. Yeah, me neither. Wait. Uh but Oh, do you mean when we ran into you at the full of Sandra? And you said some mean things to me? As I recall, you were only trying to look out for your sister. It was just a few words spoken in anger. Don't worry. Whatever it was you said, I've already forgotten. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, 
It sounds like Gina knows what she did was wrong. Owning up to your mistakes and committing to do better in the future is what counts. I understand that feeling of wanting to stand up for your family when they're being mistreated. Really, I do. But next time, maybe consider a different tactic? Something you can pull off more effectively and without arousing suspicion. Alright, that's enough. Got it. Thank you. Lynette, why do I feel like I'm missing something here? Hey, here you are. I was wondering where you'd all run off to. Great! Everyone's in one place. That makes this so much easier. What's up? <laughs> what do you think? It's group photo time! We have to commemorate the debut of the Lost Puppet Director's Edition. Okay, everyone, we all have pretty awkward smiles on our faces in the photo from Hotel de Boer, so this time, no forced smiles allowed. Oh. Am I really not allowed to force a smile? Is smiling tough for you? I'll try, I suppose. I think I can manage. Lynette, Traveler, come on! You two should be right in the middle. Three, about Lenny? two, one, smile! Please let me be in the two. I want to see that face. Let me see! It's just two of us, but that's okay. A warning success. My line of sight was a little bit off. As far as large as smile is... Genius. I am surprised how long this took to deal with this like first ending like damn. I'll do more in the next episode guys. Alright guys, I'm gonna avail. Like subscribe, I'll see you later. Sayonara.